don't have any problems with woolly mammoths. I just prefer being away from them. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. This is going to be Let's Experience Everything, that is the game everything. And here I am, I just started. I am what looks like a woolly mammoth. Okay, so uh, I wanted to go ahead and play this game because if you haven't already seen it, it's a very kind of strange, oh, strange kind of game. So here I am. When you uh, first log into it, you're just a randomly assigned an animal uh, with very strange mechanics. It's kind of silly. I'm gonna approach this rock and I think it's thinking. Some things will help you on your journey. Other things are just thinking about themselves and, in, and the situation they're in. You can trust all of them or none of them. It's up to you. That's very, that's very uh, real life. Anyway, so this game is called Everything. It doesn't really give you an explanation for what it is, other than possibly, I would say, uh, like a life simulator. Uh, people have called it a consciousness simulator, which is very interesting. So again, before I just jump into the game itself, I do want to assess my mood before playing. As you know, this channel is all about the media psychology behind games and what it means to engage mindfully with video games so that we can get the most out of them. So my mood going into this game, I was actually pretty uh, relaxed. Uh, it's the weekend, so I won't be saying that I'm stressed anymore, at least not right now. I know I usually come into games stressed, but I've rested and recovered, and so I came into this with a pretty neutral mood. I wasn't in particularly good mood or bad mood, uh, but I was feeling like I wanted something of a challenge, a cognitive uh, challenge. This won't give me much of an emotional challenge, I don't think, but a cognitive challenge to try and figure out what the heck is going on here and, and how to progress. Oh, hello. Oh, they're making me move. I had to excuse myself out of their way. Alrighty, so let's interact with something. Oh, look at all of us. It's my family. Something's having a thought. Ooh, I can run. What you thinking, Rock? I can tell you exactly what all the other stones are up to here. I've been keeping a record of it for years. When they come and go, what they're doing, and who's up to no good. I really hate a bunch of them, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> They're just appalling. You wouldn't believe the ha half the stuff I see. What, I don't have time to think about myself? That would be such a waste. Get out of here. Out! <laughs> okay, I don't know if I like the vibe of this rock. I think rocks are these stones. I mean, these stones are probably just minding their own business. That guy's being all judgmental. That's one way to live life. Um, but I'm gonna live it this way. I'm gonna flippity-floppity around with my other woolly mammoths. And look at thoughts and stuff. So as I make my way to these other thoughts and just generally get a layout of the land, I want to say that I'm loving this so far. I love just- oh hello penguins! I didn't know we were in the same biome, but I guess that that makes sense. It's cold or something. I don't know. Oh, don't go. Don't go over there. That's my personal business. Anyways, <laughs> um, I would say the levels for these games, and if you see my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. The mood management levels. The levels of kind of engagement that this game would give me for my uh, psychology. So looking through them, first one being excitatory potential. I think this has a pretty low excitatory potential. It's supposed to be calm. It's not supposed to be very engaging or thrilling. And that's good because I'm not really looking for something that's super engaging and thrilling. Wow. <laughs> I, I want something that's calm. Whoa. Spears? Spears? Do I have a predator around here? As in a human? Anyways, okay, hedonic valence is kind of high here. I mean, well, I'd say middle. You know, it's not super cheery, super, super happy-go-lucky, but it's definitely silly. You're not supposed to take it like, it's, well, you take it seriously, but not too seriously. Once we get into the actual, like, uh, meat of this game, it is kind of serious, but you can kind of just do your own thing and flippity-flop around like this. <laughs> Everything sings. Oh, look at me. I'm so cute. Uh, singing is how we, how all things communicate. Sing to other animals. Oh, hello, hello. I like that. I like it. It's very sociable. 
As for semantic affinity, this game is not any, I mean, is it like my real life? No, I'm not, I'm not running around in circular, circular flops here. Yes, hi, hi. Uh, I don't, I'm not a woolly mammoth. I don't, oh, this is frozen. Oh, how cool. Uh, so yeah, this is far from everyday life, which is actually, you know, that's nice. It's nice to get away from everyday life. I think that has some therapeutic context. As long as you keep moving in any direction you choose, that will take you where you need to go. I guess, technically speaking, if I don't have anywhere I need to go, then going anywhere will take me where I need to go. I can join other mammoths by pressing or holding V when close. Another woolly mammoth is close enough. Hello. Oh, we joined. Yes. Sing, sing. Yay. I don't have any problems with woolly mammoths. I just prefer being away from them. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's fair enough. You've decided uh, that you don't want certain company. I see now, you find yourself inseparable. Hello. Let's all sing and join. Oh, I can see the complexity of my network is growing up in that little icon on the top. That's handy. Oh no. I lost my original self, did I? No, is that me? You know what? I think the point of the game is that it doesn't matter. Uh, returning to the levels, uh, so semantic affinity is low. Hedonic, I would actually say, is like three quarters of the way. This is really nice. Let's run. Woo! Roll out. Semantic affinity, hedonic valence. I'm having a hard time remembering them now. Excitatory potential. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It's not on the high side. Um... What was the other one? <laughs> oh, absorption potential. See, I became so absorbed in this that I, I forgot what was going on. So I'd say that this actually has a pretty high, oh, what does that mean? A pretty high absorption potential. Uh, my mood has definitely changed. I've been brought into a new environment. My thoughts are on a whole different uh, kind of route now. Right mouse button to descend. What's this? Oh, look at me with my bug eyes. And now I am Wolf. Hello, all. Hello. Bark, bark, bark. And I am running. So I'm leaving my mammoth, my mammoth friends behind. In a way, I am still them. And they are still me. But I am off to explore the world as Arctic Wolf, which there's nothing wrong with that. I will make new adventures as a wolf. I am, I am tumbling. Is this okay? Hi, friend. It looks like you've seen things from a little thing's point of view. Now you might be wondering what it's like to see things the other way around, to see things from a bigger thing's point of view. Out of all the points of view you find, which one is the right one? I would say there are no right points of view. Ooh, tree. Everything is set to default enter mode using one button mouse. Okay. Ooh, I can move very slowly because I am a tree. But I think this game might be suggesting that we are all kind of of the same fabric of reality and the universe. You know, we're all on some level the same. This is a very calming experience, but it's also like eudaimonic because it, it is making me think about like life and the nature of everything. This is one of the most most boring summers I've ever lived through. You're, you're a hut. The only thing that's happened today is a stone pine bugging me. Wow. Well, excuse me. What there is. I find it a little difficult to say what the subject matter of this seminar is going to be because it's too fundamental to give it a title. So this is Alan Watts. I'm I love talk about Alan what Watts lex lectures. Now, the first thing though uh, that we have to do is to get our perspectives with some background. So about cute. the basic ideas which influence our everyday common sense. 
our fundamental notions about what life is about. So cute. Ideas of the world, which are built into the very nature of the language we use, and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth <laughs> is an image in terms of which we try to make sense of the world. Mm. Okay. A myth is an image in which we try to make sense of the world. Almost kinda. I don't want to stretch things too far, but almost kind of like a video game sometimes. There are some video games out there, like this one, that are trying to help us... Not help us, but are designed to recreate real reality from another perspective, to say something. Oh, hello. Bark to you too. I love this little penguin clan I have created. This is a wonderful mixture of of calm eudaimonic vibes with some fun hedonic vibes as well this is what i would call like i thought this was i predicted this was going to be a eudaimonic game that was going to be serious and cognitively challenging and while there are some aspects to it like understanding what my my goal is here and understanding how to interpret what's going on i would say that this is very high hedonic valence as well So I would like to be intentional with this game. I think it's important that when you play a game, especially for a certain, you know, a certain extended amount of time, that you be intentional about why you're playing it. And I think right now my intention is I want to learn. I feel like I'm in a mood to learn and think of something new to see a different perspective than what I usually see in my day-to-day -day life. My day-to-day -day life is getting a little a little complicated with like finances and jobs and stuff. This is perfect for taking me out of that. I probably need to take a bath. You know what? That's fine. See, jeez. A world that peoples. You, as a human being, you grow out of this physical universe in just exactly the same way that an apple grows off an apple tree. So let's say the tree which grows apples is a tree which apples, using apple as a verb. <laughs> And a world in which human beings oh arrive is a world that peoples. And so the existence of people is symptomatic. Oh, <gasps> did I just kill? The kind of universe we did live in. Did I just kill something? I don't like this. Just as hair on a head is symptomatic of what's going on in the organism. But we have been brought up not to feel that we belong in the world. So our popular speech reflects it. We say, I came into this world. Mm. You didn't, you came out of it. We say, face facts. We talk about encounters with reality. As if it was a head-on meeting of completely alien agencies. And the average person has the sensation mm. that he Ooh. is a somewhat that exists inside a bag of skin. A center of consciousness, mm. which looks out at this thing and what the hell is it going to do to me? Uh, I recognize you, you kind of look like me, and uh, I've seen myself in a mirror, and uh, y you look like you might be people. <laughs> so maybe you're intelligent, maybe you can love too. Mm. And uh, maybe perhaps you're all right, some of you are anyway. You've got the right color of skin, or you have the right religion, or whatever it is, you're okay, but there are all those people over in Asia, and Africa, and they may not really be people. When you want to destroy someone, you always define them as unpeople. Unpeople. Hmm. What the heck is that? Oh my goodness! Excuse me! I don't like that! I don't like that! I know, I'm just- I'm making- I unpeopled him, or them. I'm sorry, I unpeopled you. <laughs> I decided I didn't like that. I just wasn't expecting a creature-looking thing to come out of nowhere here. You, aren't you? Oh, I became you. Now what- what do I- I got a- I got a- Oh. I'm a tetra cloud. 
Oh, I could descend even more? Oh, wow. Oh, I'm in a, I'm a lenticular galaxy. Okay, okay, so it, it loops around to the, to the front again, to the, to the biggest again. Wow. So yes, what I'm experiencing right now, and something I thought might be useful to, to bring up, um, the temporarily expanded boundaries of the self when it comes to media psychology. So usually we'll like watch a show and engage and identify with characters and we're temporarily expanding our sense of self uh, and relating to that character or that person or something. And it, it offers us a chance to kind of um, vicariously fulfill some psychological needs because we've expanded our sense of self to also include uh, others you know characters mediated people oh i'm gonna get i'm gonna get one more friend and i'm gonna go check that out yay hello the longer change is observed the more it ceases to happen Ooh. the less time that goes by the more that happens in it oh wow that's that's so interesting i mean yeah if you're from if you're like on this scale of things, you're not going to notice all the little changes that happen. Because right now as a galaxy, a second is probably like the lifetime of our sun. And so we don't notice all the changing going on within that time. Anyways, so what this game is really helping me out with right now is temporarily like temporarily like expanding my sense of self I feel light years <laughs> light years away from light years away from um my my previous problems I feel I'm trying to dance but they won't dance I feel so distant from myself as Courtney thoughts are the friction between things and other things Thoughts would never exist if everything thought it was the same thing. As you go around listening to things, their thoughts will make impressions on your mind. When you go out and experience life, you will have your own thoughts, and they will reflect the things you've listened to and observed. Give thinking a go. Just try not to take it too seriously. Oh, I love it! When the eye is lit up, think by pressing X. Or none of them to be friends. Can I don't have time? That will probably never happen. The only thing that's happened today is supposed. Ah, okay, I see. It's an amalgamation of all the thoughts that I've seen before, but I, I can't quite come up with a cohesive thought yet because I guess I haven't interacted enough. I haven't had enough friction with other beings. You want to join us? You look lenticular. Oh no, you lost your thought when you joined us. I'm sorry. I interrupted your thought. <laughs> I'm a goat! Bah! Everybody listen to me! <laughs> I know, we just immediately upset all of these deer. They're like, shut up! I'm sorry, I was just so excited to be a goat. Oh. Okay, so my audio cut out there for a little bit, but I am back. And I'm just going to be offering some closing thoughts. This game has been such a good combination of eudaimonic and hedonic, uh, kind of feelings, I would say. Hey, I found a friend. Um, so far we've seen a lot of things that have been either strongly eudaimonic or strongly hedonic. But I think this has been such a good balance between those things. So if you're not, so you don't have to like kind of choose between, okay, do I want something that's feel good, happy, or something that's just eudaimonic challenging. I think this is a really calm, absorbing, engaging experience. My mood after playing this has really like evened out and I feel more connected to the world, I wanna say, because this has reminded me of some really good perspectives about how we're all connected and how my everyday worries really don't matter that much. I think this is actually a really great investment. It is a philosophy simulator. 
uh, just like back in the olden days, Aristotle and Socrates would offer these um, these kind of analogies for you, these thought exercises, thought experiments to do. I think this game is the next step in philosophical thought experiments. This is all frighteningly meaningless. I had all this expectation. I came all the way in here and all I get is this, is you. Is all the other stones around here running around me? Whoever set this game up clearly gave me no consideration. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's a really interesting thought. Had all this expectation to be something big and like amazing or in a very, you know, specific kind of amazing setup, but it was, but the, all this stone got was that spot with those stones and they're disappointed. I think that's kind of. That's relatable where we have this idea where we're all supposed to be like this big something something when life is really just about getting through the normal things, you know, not necessarily needing to be super exciting and meaningful like in a way that we would expect things to be, I want to say quote unquote meaningful. There's meaning in everything. Anyways, my mood has really improved. Uh, I do feel a great boost of well-being, but I am being intentional with my time with this game and I think it has drawn to a close because my intention was to learn something, to feel a new perspective and to really take that new perspective into my mood. And I have done just that and I am ready to stop playing and to go back to dealing with everyday things, but with just the reminder that I'm connected to everything, you know, the the philosophy, the eudaimonic connectedness that this game offers. So uh, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I highly recommend this. Uh, if you're just interested in philosophy, I think it's great for that. You kind of get a philosophical kind of uh, education as you're being, as you're interacting and trying to discover new things. Uh, but if you are looking for a mood boost, I think this is actually perfect for that too. It's not too serious that it gets like weird or, well, it is strange, but it's not too serious that you feel like bogged down by it. It's not too heavy, uh, but it's not so light that the meaning is like lost, that it's like, oh, it's too silly. I can't, I don't understand what it's trying to say because it's too silly. I think this is really well put together and I want to say that I'd love to see more games like this and even include them on, in some kind of uh, emotional mindfulness kind of curriculum. I think it would be super helpful. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any suggestions for other games, please let me know and I'd be happy to uh, see them and see what you'd like to um, what you'd like to have covered. Anyways, as always, thank you so much and until next time, happy playing.